Uh, thank you to join me uh, to join us uh, here today, and uh, thank you, for Alex, for hosting and Dominique for organizing this uh, talk today, and all the London uh, Java community. So let's uh, share my screen and start. Uh, right. Uh, so, like Alex said, I'm a uh, principal consultant at Red Hat. I've been living in UK almost 10 years and work with uh, that even before because I'm from Brazil. So I was working uh, mostly 20 years. So I have my Twitter there, if you guys can follow. And one of the things uh, I do in my volunteer time, my spare time, is to uh, mentor people on uh, meet, meet a mentor. And is uh, also a program connect with people that is organized the London Java community. Some of the guys there are working as well on the Meta Mentor. So I help mentor people that's looking for career change or Spring Boot, microservice, or cloud development using message brokers, uh, Kafka, and, and business process, business rules, anything involve uh, the middleware portfolio that I um, expect. Right, but today we, gonna talk of uh, the problem I'm trying to solve. So I was thinking a lot of, uh, about uh, uh, how we can extract from the business process, like uh, BPM or any G BPM tool you have uh, some of the uh, metrics. So I was uh, thinking that for quite a while when I was working on other customers and building process with them. And I was uh, actually looking to how I extract fast feedback uh, to give fast feedback to, for the business. So you, you guys probably are familiar, some of the BPM process uh, tools actually has a, a ways of extracting metrics from the BPM itself. We're gonna show like uh, which wait stage or where is uh, the, the, the things are stopping or how many are pending, how many are approved or rejected, all these uh, kind of uh, uh, special metrics on the BPM. Right, uh, but are more interesting to extract the business metrics that's not related to the BPM metrics. So collecting business metrics, deliver the customer metrics to different systems and get the data partner to support the business decisions. So the business can decide with facts, right? They can support the business decisions with these facts. And so what, what is the use case? Uh, so what is the use case? So the use case I'm using is the agricultural claim founding application. So basically we have like a farm that gonna fill up a form uh, claiming found for improve his farm. So like a farm like uh, Tyler Lunster that wants a loan to buy two new trucks. Then we have another farmer which is Sansi Stark, she wants a, a, a need a loan to a new barn. So these farmers that need uh, improvements, need loans for a bank or a government agents that are gonna give you uh, the funds to improve their farms. And eventually they're gonna fight uh, over Esteros, but this is another chapter for next year. <laughs> but the, so this guy is gonna fill up the forms and ask for, uh, for the, this loan. So let's kick off the whole process. And then we're gonna see how we integrate this with Kafka and Grafana, right? So the, the what, what we, are, we are interesting is a, an example what we're gonna follow is the government granting funds in, in our pretended country and giving money to, to farms based on the central government budget per region. So we're gonna like simulate this government that receive these claims and then they can give you found for different regions. We're gonna have like North, uh, South, East and West. And then we can just uh, see how this uh, play out. So we're gonna care about this distribution of this uh, budget in, in, in regions. This is a common scenario as well. Like you're gonna see normally inside of companies that has different areas. Of, uh, of the company and these different areas would be like uh, asking for budget for a project. And then the niche control has like a central area of financial area of the company that they're gonna give them 
budget to different areas. So it's kind of similar kind of uh, scenario. In our demo, we, today we're going to use a small Java process to simulate this claiming found. So we're going to be working only in the back end. So we're not going to have like a, a shiny UI uh, to, pre, to fill the form. And we don't want to actually spend too much time uh, creating this form. So what we're going to do is run a Java process that generate the data and then kick off the process. And then we have another Java, uh, small Java process that's going to simulate the work of the, the staff member. So when once this process are kick off, they're going to stop in a user case, which is a wait stage on a process. All the BPM process is like a use, use uh, a task, which is a wait stage, is waiting for a user interaction, a human interaction. So the internal staff member, we're going to use the GBPM task to create uh, a decision. So we're going to approve or reject that, uh, that form, that uh, application. Then in the end, we're going to connect with, with uh, Apache Kafka. So we have uh, integration with Apache Kafka. And, and then, then we're going to uh, display this in a Grafana for analysis of the data. Because we don't want to bear this on a, on a database on, on something that a business not, can't actually use that. So we want to like leverage the information put in, in, a, in a Grafana and display in a, in a nice dashboard. So the analysis of the data we are trying to do this today is to get the custom metrics, not the BPPM metrics, but the custom metrics we have on, on the process application and collect this valuable data using the integration with Kafka. Feed the external systems like Kafka and the, our database, display metrics for analysis using Grafana and get these facts to support in a nice dashboard then this can give you the business the way to improve the process. So the overview of the solution we're gonna to demo today is this diagram here. So basically we now focus on UI. So we're gonna use GBPM as our tool for the business process. So GBPM is an open source, a community tool for create a business process. And he creates a key server that we're gonna deploy there on, on the cloud and the key server expose a REST APIs. So any nice UI you guys are familiar with, you can use to attach and consume keys, uh, REST APIs, is, it can be used like Angular, uh, React, uh, Node.js, anything. So we have a small system service to run locally, the data generated task automator that we wanna see with more details uh, further on on the slides. Then we have the Kafka stream. We use stream Z to deploy that we're going to check uh, with more uh, details. Then we have a patch kernel to do the consumer is the bridge because the, GPP, the GBPM has a, a published way to publish information on like a configured way to publish information to Kafka. And then we use Kafka bridge with a patch kernel to save the data on a data uh, base in FluxDB. And then Grafana has a data source to connect to FluxDB and display on a dashboard. So we see these components with more details and further down in the slides. So deploy on a Kubernetes. So the Kubernetes is the platform we choose to put on a cloud. A Orange community distribution is the community version of OpenShift. So it's Orange community distribution is the OKD. So then we're gonna put in the cloud what we're gonna deploy there. So we use the Kubernetes as our, as our platform. So it's a platform as a service. And we, the foundation is to deploy all our applications and, and we need a database. So we're gonna deploy the GBPM key server, the Apache Grafana, the, uh, so Apache, sorry, the Apache uh, uh, Kafka Grafana and other components. So the, for deploying the Kafka, we use StreamZ, which is our, uh, is our operator. So the Kubernetes way to deploy Apache Kafka is easy because the operator can deploy uh, Apache Kafka uh, in Kubernetes uh, very easy. We provide three operators with cluster talking in the user. And the cluster and talks are defined in, as objects in Kubernetes. So it's all YAM files that you run, install, the, you do the 
if you if you are familiar with the uh, cloud uh, commands or Kubernetes commands, is, then you do just do minus f apply from the file and you install the operator, and then he starts installing the cluster and topic in the user. Support distribution tr uh, tracing using Iega and that's the stream Z. So it's a whole chapter just to talk about like operators, how the operator works. I'm not gonna get very deep on this. We try to focus on the integration using uh, Kafka uh, today. So is the stream Z gonna deploy for you the Zookeeper cluster and the Kafka cluster, the broker. So the operator you choose uh, how many uh, nodes you want on the Kafka cluster. You normally need to pair with the number of uh, Zookeeper because it's using for authentication. And then you can create the topics and keys on, on the operator and operators watch a few namespace on the cloud and replicates this in all the namespace you want to deploy the uh, cluster. So the GBPM is the tool we use for the workflow to the business uh, process flow. is a management uh, process managed task list uh, tool and then also has some monitor for getting the report of the metrics from the BPM itself. And it's a core engine as the human task service, all persistent, and you can use GMS, REST, and you can use embedded and call straight like a CDI, connect injecting and so on. Uh, you also can build on Eclipse, TLG or VS Code. We have a VS Code plugin to uh, modeling our process on using GBPM, but today we're going to use the uh, workbench uh, tool. So the process design for this uh, demo we use is, is the workbench tooling. So it's a seamless process modeling. It's based on the BPM in uh, version two specification. So all the process is a cushion uh, a compiler. So it's a drag and drop tool. You have a palette with a custom service and also has some case managed capability, but we're not interested in this. We're interested in to how we integrate this with uh, uh, Kafka. And we're gonna see uh, later on, we're not using any of the former generations because we all connect with uh, uh, REST clients with, through our uh, small Java process. So you can export the modeling to PNG, PDF, CSG, or BPN and two files. So that's the uh, workbench. You can drag and drop and then create executable uh, BPM process for you. So behind the scenes is all uh, executable. So it actually goes through this uh, flow and it's an easy way to like reduce the gap between coding and representing this for a business to understand the flow of your process. Then you can take decisions on how the process needs to change and how the process flow needs to be adding some steps or remove some steps. So the came from process we're gonna use uh, today is the main process model is the parent, you can call it as a parent process model. So that's the process I, I built for this demo. Oh, let me go back. So this, uh, this process goes through this flow, set up some values then publish to the Kafka integration uh, process, then it stops on a claim found approval task, which is a wait stage. Then you can do approvals and rejects and go to different paths. So we're gonna see this simulation on the demo later today. So the, the GBPM service task has a task of a, a lot of lists of uh, service. So it's all like working item handlers. In this service task list, you can have like integrations with Camel, decision tasks, emails, or Kafka publish, which we're gonna to use today. So this basically is creating a custom nodes the nodes that's not just the BPM annotation nodes, but you can have an extension list of different nodes. And if you don't find anything that was already installed on a workbench, you can find in a in a GitHub it has a list of all the integrations with like Google uh, Docs or Twitter or any other things there. And if you can't find one custom node that was creating like a work item handle that was already ready for you to use, you can then uh, create your own. So if you want to create your own, you can uh, create your own work item handler, use a, a Maven archetype. Yes, we have a Maven archetype already available to use this uh, custom 
work item handler, like I have working on different customers. So what they need is an integration with SOAP calls. So they want to GBPM to uh, do calls to SOAP uh, web service. And we don't have that already created or it needs some uh, more implementation to get security or authentication. Then you can get the archetype and do your own code and change the names, change the values, change the even like the logo icons and stuff. So you change everything, build your own, then you do a Maven install and you create a, a jar file Then you can uh, upload to the doc list on the workbench. Then you'll be ready to use and usable in your process. So the advantage of doing this also is it's easy to debug. You don't bury in like logic, business logic inside of a, a BPM, you create a custom node. And then when you hit that node, it actually goes through this code and then you can actually see what is happening when you need to debug. So the Kafka process integration is the sub process I create for this demo and is gonna receive the information from the parent process that we can dynamically publish information to different top key queues. So you're gonna uh, prepare the payload and we have a payload uh, parameter and a topic parameter that is passing to the process parameters from the parent process and then Kafka publish is the one that's going to publish the information to to Kafka. So it's part of the server task list so you can go there put on and he's already installed. Then is be reusable, integrated node, and is a configurable way to publish meshes on, on Kafka. And we're gonna see uh, with more details. So the Apache Kafka, if you're not familiar, is a simply publish subscribe message model. So it's a streaming message. And so it's appending information like centralized uh, log information. So it's, it's a cluster format, format from brokers Apache Zookeeper service for authentication. Relative is to, to use across all the cloud. So you, you have string Z like I show, it's easy to deploy in the cloud and it supports your Kubernetes operators, which is the stream Z. So that's the main use of the Kafka cluster. You have producers that are gonna send information to Kafka. Then we have consumers that are gonna uh, be reading the top key queues. And you can have like stream processors that are gonna be streaming uh, if not stopping, and then you can have like uh, connectors uh, with the database, which is a useful way to do audit on, on database. They have like connectors to, let's say, for example, Postgres, and you do the connector for Postgres. And every time you, you, shoot, you shoot some tables, and every time that tables get changed, you push information to a audit top key, a queue, for example, then you can uh, audit easily connect straight to with a uh, capital connect. But we're not focus on, on whole Apache today. We're just gonna talk about how we integrate your systems and in a easy way with GBPM. But it's a extensible uh, topic to discuss. We can, we can talk that uh, in another session. It's very nice use to, uh, to use is heavily, Apache cap is heavily on the UI. So it's one of the difference of the message broker. Message broker normally, normally puts information on Memory, this can be persistent queues or not persistent queues, but Kafka is always saving on the file system and putting appending information from, from your producers and streaming processors or connectors. And we used InfluxDB because it's a timer uh, database, was used to deploy on Kubernetes, using easy to use and push information to. So it's a time series database and, and easy to get external persistent metrics. We use two measurements of the data for this uh, demo. We have like a long update and we have the budget updates. So Grafana has a support out of the box for InfluxDB. So he has a data source that connects InfluxDB. So that was easy also to configure in use InfluxDB uh, as our database for this demo. Providing support for Kubernetes operators so we can do the InfluxDB operator install on the Kubernetes. The other components we have on this demo is, so we have the GBPM running there. We should publish uh, information to the long uh, update topic and the budget update topic. Then we have a Kafka bridge, which is Java camel 
consumer. So he's reading information from these two queues, and then he does a conversion to JSON, which is the format that he can uh, easily save on InfluxDB and update information on InfluxDB. Then the data source to InfluxDB sends the information to Grafana. We have the uh, dashboard created there. So when you create a dashboard, you create queries that what do you want to uh, display on Grafana. Right, so that's the other component code that you can see. This is collecting information from, from the FluxDB and check if we need to update and get information from, from the queue, from the top key queue, and then updating uh, the InfluxDB. So it's all like camel based framework to do this integration easily in arrangement of the data before we need to save on, on the InfluxDB. So the other components we have as well is the data generator, which is a Java process that is doing the REST API to interact with the GBPM key server. And he, like Rondo, created data sets with information from the claim farms, like interacting with the with, uh, data, creating different farms, uh, claims, different amount of um, uh, money they are claiming, and then send this uh, payload via REST to kick off the process, then the process gets started. The task automator is another Java process we running locally that collects a few tasks and do the job of the staff that need to analyze and move the tasks from pending in reject. So he randomly, he choose if he's gonna reject or approve the tasks. Then we have the Grafana, which is the open source analytic tool to visualize the, uh, the information. So we have two dash dashboards that we wanna see uh, in this uh, presentation uh, today. So we ready for the demo? So here is uh, the OpenShift container platform, which is the uh, claim found namespace. So we have deployed Grafana, deployed InfluxDB, Kafka Bridge, and the claim found, which is the key, uh, GBPM key server. And the GBPM key server is where the BPM process is running and you can interact with via uh, REST API. So you can go to uh, the docs on, on the name in, namespace router and you can see the APIs you can interact. Is the business center is the workbench. So you can see the Kafka GBPM process we build. And let's check uh, the process, let's filter the, this list and check the process. So we have the claim process here which is the main parenting process. So here you see it starts, gets gonna get some values and then gonna publish the status to Kafka as pending. Here he calls this sub process where it has the integration. The claim found approval task is a wait stage. So the task is getting creating tasks here. So he's creating task for a staff member to uh, go there and check if they need to approve or if they need to reject. And then depends of uh, his decision, force the flows to go to different flows. If he rejects, he probably will start to reject to uh, Kafka. And if he gonna approve, then we go to this flow on the top, which publish status approve, and then publish the remain. So it goes to approve, we calculate the remain uh, budget, then we publish the approval on, on Kafka, and then we publish the remain uh, budget as well, sending this information. All this information from these uh, two nodes goes to the integration Kafka node. And so these nodes uh, has this uh, cross on them. So let's uh, go back to, to my first uh, node with the cross. So this, all these nodes with the cross, this one, this one, this one, and this one, they're all calling a sub-process where they have the Kafka configuration. So dynamically, I send different information to the sub-process. So let's close this one and check the uh, integration process. So the Kafka integration process is this one here. So you're gonna get the information for the parity process, so we have a start and then gonna prepare the payload and public on Kafka publish. That's the actual node, which is reusable node 
that you can just drag and drop using different process. So it's available in your palette. So you click it there and then the Kafka working item is there. So you can just drag and drop and a, a publish, Kafka publish is already uh, ready to use. You need to just configure it to tell which topic you want to send. So let's delete this one and click there and check. Uh, let's check how that got configured. So I configured to use parameters, right? So it's all parameterized. So you have a top key and the value, the payload, which is coming from the parenting process. So then this way, I dynamically send information to different top key queues. Let's close that. And let's check Grafana. So here in Grafana, we have, we're gonna see two dashboards. Uh, this dashboard, we have uh, the regions. So it's all different regions here. So you're all based on Scottish, Scotland. <laughs> so it's all from Scotland regions uh, for some reason though. And then we have this uh, uh, clock like uh, that if it goes, that's the total budget utilization is go green, is two with a, a good, if you start going to yellow or red, you uh, starting running out of budget. So we, we put a maximum, a limit of budget we have to uh, distribute amount uh, these regions. Then we have this other dashboard, which is uh, uh, the total use per region. So the previous one shows the pending and approvals. Here gonna, we're gonna put the totals uh, of the budget use per region. And we also gonna display here a pie chart. So let's get started. So we're gonna run that Java process I talk, I spoke about it. That Java process is the data generator. So we're gonna put 30 here. Let's just put 30 and then we're gonna kick off the process creating 30 uh, JSON payloads sending it to the REST API and, and kick off the process. So we kick off all the 30 uh, tasks. So he, if you remember from the process, you're gonna go first on the pending stage and then stops on the task. So if you go back here, you could start to see that the pending stages are coming to the regions. And if you see in the process where, just to see where we are. So you go on here, publish the pending stage status, and then he goes to claim uh, approval task. So he stops there and needs uh, interaction for a user interaction to move to approval or reject. So that's the stage we are, then we're gonna need to go to approval and reject. So you see now we have all the regions with pending. And you can have another terminal open here that we can just kick off the task automator. So the task automator gonna collect the first uh, few tasks and start working on those tasks. So the task here is similar like a Jira task, right? You create a task, then the person created is not the person gonna work on the task. So you need to first assign to yourself, which is the uh, claiming task then you start in the task. So it's in, put in, in progress. So you, you start the tasks, then you complete the task. You do done on these tasks. And then when you complete it, the, our Java process here randomly gonna choose if you're gonna approve or reject all these tasks he start claiming. So we can see we start moving uh, tasks from pending to reject and approval in the different regions and the budget, budget utilization is going up. So let's uh, claim another group of uh, 10. Then start moving again. Some tasks is refreshing every 10 seconds. So we're gonna see uh, the budget utilization going up and it's too pending. I hope to see they start moving uh, to approval and reject. So we have more approvals coming. So you see the budget went up. Now we need to claim a few more just to make moving, making uh, change the status. 
we start playing and then starting uh, the tasks and then completing. Then the Kafka Bean is sending information and then being published and then Grafana getting from InfluxDB the results. And that is the total amounts per region. So you see the total amounts is gonna, gonna start going up. And every uh, region has a different amount. When you pass the mouse through, you can actually see the, the value better, right? Then just this uh, tower uh, graphic. And in the side here, we have a pie chart. So the pie chart shows the percentage per region. That's a plugin you need to install and you can filter and check only the regions you are interested to see. And this is a plugin, it doesn't come with a graph, a Grafana a vanilla version. You need, to, you need to install this plugin to have the, the pie chart, but it's a really nice to, way to visualize your information. And it's all in real time. So the process, you see a kickoff process, we managed to change the tasks and then uh, Kafka get published information on the topic queues and instantly like every 10 seconds or you can put a second, two seconds, how many times uh, uh, you, you want to refresh this dashboard. So the business is gonna have a nice way to visualize and one of the reasons I choose Grafana because it's very common in, uh, in a lot of customs I've been, for, been before. You see now we everything's starting moving more. So let's kick off my, more process. Just to see the utilization bumping up, ramping up. So let's put more another 30 uh, tasks. So all this code is available in GitHub and, uh, and I can give it to Alex and Dominique. They can put the links so for GitHub to the task simulator, to the GBPN configuration, everything. So you run another interaction to collect another uh, 10 tasks and then claim all these tasks. And start moving more tasks around. So you can imagine like areas of your company requesting budgets for projects. They are department that's responsible for the financial has a, a staff member and they start doing approval rejects and you still have some pending tasks, but they interacting and then a top management uh, team can actually assess that dash a dashboard and see. Uh, let's uh, kick off more tasks collect more, move more, and then let's create more. Let's put 200 just to like ramp up more utilization budget. I'm not gonna go to the point that's getting in red because I put like a, a, quite a huge limit on a, on a budget utilization. It's all configuring on a, on a dashboard, how much is the maximum. And then the dashboard interacts like this. So let's collect another, two, another 10. Um, so he's claiming the tasks. You see going up a little more on utilization. Then we're gonna, we can continue that for the whole day and just claiming and completing and tasks and moving. But I think you guys start getting, I already get the point is it's all real time. See, it's very quickly. And let's check the, let's check the, the other dashboard, the total. Yeah, the totals also went up and then the percentage is moving. And that's it, thank you. That's the demo. And I just want to show you guys what I used to interact with the, my BPM process in the client side was the uh, Postman to create the uh, payloads and the rest APIs uh, is all interacting here to do like one round of the tests. And the reason I use the Postman, you can use any any REST client, but I, I thought easy to configure uh, different environments because you can configure the, your local environment and 
you can configure your cloud environment and then you change and start pointing your same same rest and points interactions uh, with different endpoints uh, that you needed like the base rl or the container id process id and once that was done we just put this inside of the java process and run that there thanks very much paolo um, I, I was fascinated. I was really distracted by uh, people joining the meeting, and I was saying, "Go away! I want to focus on what Paolo is saying." <laughs> <laughs> it's like a uh, very. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Um, I've asked. Uh, please type them into the chat or uh, use the Zoom raise your hand feature. I'll try and unmute you um, to um, so you can ask the question yourself, or I can ask it for you. Um, I, I had uh, two questions and you very helpfully answered one of them straight away, which was that uh, I was wondering about the, uh, whether it was available through GitHub, your, your demo, and you said um, you'll supply the details for that later on. Um, so either I or Barry or Dom will uh, make sure that's available. Um, and uh, um, so the other question, um, it's total coincidence I'm wearing a Kafka t-shirt, by the way. I was actually thinking Kafka might be a bit of overkill for this sort of business process, um, but you're always, you've obviously chosen it. Um, what, 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 what do you say about that? Is, it, is, is Kafka the, uh, the right tool for this, or is it for particularly large business processes, or, or what? Yeah, so... Some, some other customers would prefer like, uh, let's create a listeners and then you can use listeners and then you have a, a service behind that you're gonna publish that on Kafka or a service that's gonna save you straight on a database and you can connect to Grafana. But the, but the reason is to show that if you know, in a user case that you need Kafka for distributing a PPM process, like normally would we would have like a large global a company with different regions and you want to display in a central uh, place all the budget you're distributing by these regions like we put the regions in one country but you can also imagine in regions by uh, different gel locations and and kafka really work well uh, to centralize all the information you have like let's say in italy then france in spain and you got all this information and then you, you have different BPMs. So the BPM process, we have like the, I create the integration layer with the Kafka there, but you also can get the Kafka put in, in different process. But the reason was to simulate kind of scenario that the parenting main process could be a different one in Italy, could be a different one in France or in US or in Russia. Then you have these different main process that need to publish in different queues for Kafka and then but collect the kind of the same information that need to be displayed on, on, the, on the on the so I, I don't see as a, a, a killer you need to evaluate the size of information you need to stream and it's a publish I would say it would be a killer if you try to consume it from inside of the BPM process because then you need to customize a node and that no need to wait, right? Because you need to stream the information in and then resume the process. Would I would prefer to actually has a consumer outside that can signal the process and tell, hey, I have the information here, go and process the other uh, steps. Uh, you did I answer your question? You, you did ask my question. I'm trying to unmute Hessan. Hessan, are you able to speak and ask your question, please? Yes. Uh, thanks, Paul, for the presentation. So uh, I have a question, and I, I know that it's, it's, it's a really wide question, but uh, mm -hmm. I've seen people who are always comparing Kafka with RabbitMQ. So what is your thought on it? Uh, comparing Kafka with uh, what? RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ, all right. Yeah. So. Uh, is, is, I think is, is Kafka is a streaming platform and Kafka is a message broker, right? I uh, sorry, yeah. uh, 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 Rabbit is a is a message broker. It seems like uh, Archimedes, or so you need to actually do, uh, see your use case and what should fit better for your use case, because uh, the message broker is a memory message, a form, and is a synchrony 
and, and Kafka Streams is actually a centralized uh, log solution. So he actually is heavily use the file system. So he, he, Kafka doesn't use in memory information. So every information you send to the top key is be, gonna be persistent. So it's not, you don't have this option to, let's put something, some cues that we don't want to, to let's add, some, I don't know, maybe your uh, death letter queue, you don't want to persist that. So the death letter queue is gonna, or some mirror queues, not, not gonna be persistent. In the case of Kafka, you can't have this option, right? So it's different tools for different uh, use case. We need to analyze the best way that you want to toggle. Some people start using stream, streams everywhere, streams everywhere. And I prefer to actually, oh, can I solve this with a message broker? Right, so let's use message broker. Uh, no, I need to solve this with a streaming message platform. Let's use Kafka. Thanks. Uh, does anybody have any more questions? Otherwise I get to use my host privilege and ask my own questions. Um, <laughs> so Paolo, um, I, I've only just recently tried to learn BPMN. Um, would you say it's a, a popular technique for business process modeling or um, is it just the one that you're most familiar with? Yeah, that's the one I'm most familiar with is the GBPM because it's one also that is being uh, around in the market for a very long time. So I started with GBPM three version in 2010. And so it's very like before cloud-based uh, programming, but it's also, everything's moving to cloud. It also has all the Quarkus uh, integration to, to run uh, in, in the cloud easily. But uh, yeah, is you have uh, other open source uh, tools like uh, Bonita, Active, and uh, Camunda. But I think the GBPM, because it's the longest on this road, and a few of those that I mentioned is also like forking from GBPM and building their own version of it. And then we have a, a large community of uh, GBPM uh, people behind. It's easy to interact with the people in the list. And uh, that's why, like, for example, the Kafka demo I did, this Kafka, uh, uh, the, the whole code is in Git, right? The, the GBPM work item handler that I just drag and drop, the code is in Git. So when I was trying to use it, I hit a bug and then I just open a Jira uh, and, and they, have, they have a nice tool to, anyone can go there. It's all open, all the bugs, everything is there. So I interact with the leader engineer working on this side of the, uh, the, the BPM and he quickly fix it and then fix everything because we was losing like class loader of the machine link class on the Kafka. And then he fixed it away with a safe way and then put the code there. So we kind of work together to give some ideas of how to work and then save. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of the reasons is like a wide, spread and um, old community that it, it's always good to have a a community behind the software you're using um yes so um uh, since uh, I, I i get to use my questionnaires right again um so i've, I've seen grafana used quite quite a bit um but um can you can you explain uh, how easy is it to set up and create those dashboards or something so you said oh, it's yes yes tight tight connection to influx db uh, which I'm being told is quite easy to use. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons you should you choose InfluxDB mm. because uh, when you so you install Grafana is uh, uh, where we deploy Grafana in in open in OpenShift in uh, Kubernetes. So we deploy in the Kubernetes, then you go to the dashboard there. Then they have they give you some data source already out of the box. So you, you choose InfluxDB and then you put the the connections details test is all connected. So then when you create the, the dashboard, you create queries, basically. Mm -hmm. You just write a query and then it's all drag and drop to facilitate your creation of the queries. Like you do select this uh, time uh, table. You don't have to be a, a JavaScript guru to, to do No, that. no, you don't need it. It, it. it took you a while to like do the shiny things to find like, how we put the, the one tower with red, one tower with uh, yellow, one tower with uh, blue. So like 
but it is, was uh, like Google a little bit more and then find how they actually, when you do a select on information, how you can like set up a value on a, on a tower. And then you set, then they, they give a palette of setups and palette of, of uh, colors and also give you a type of uh, shots you want to re re represent. And some of the shots don't make sense for the type of data you try to manipulate, then you know, let's drop this. But that clock thing, like you want to use to the maximum for the budget. So you do a query behind and you set up the clock. So you choose, uh, I want the shot to be the clock timer. Like, a, like a, that has a special name. I forgot uh, the name. And I guess the, 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 the strength that you mentioned is that Grafana can be expanded if there yeah. is a particular chart. Uh, already available by default. There's lots of things that can be added in. Or... Yes, exactly. If let's say, for example, if we have a a, a small component collecting Java metrics, mm -hmm. then we could create another dashboard and show CPU use, memory use, uh, Gaban collection times, all this stuff, and put there that make more easy to to see it. And I see that in other customers, they do the main monitoring of uh, Kubernetes. And push the monitor of the Kubernetes, like uh, microservice up, push microservices down, or stuff. Mm -hmm. And they all like to put everything in Grafana. And it's funny because you're walking through these offices and they have a Raspberry Pi attached to the big screen where they just set up to show those Grafana. And it's amazing. I love it. It's just like, ah, Grafana in the screen, loads of the different dashboards and a Raspberry Pi behind the, the monitor. <laughs> uh I think uh, Joseph K has a question. If Joseph, do you want to ask it yourself? Uh, yeah. So, hi. Th thanks for your talk. Um, so, our, our dev team use Grafana um, for monitoring services and stuff like that. But I was really curious, kind of, whether you've had um, like business people, like non techie people, um, really be interested in using Grafana or something like that for, for metrics and. Uh, yeah, have, have you found any of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we found some some of the, that in, in my previous uh, work. So that was one of the things that we choose Grafana. But it was to we don't put the same dashboards like the metrics of uh, like health checks of your system on the same <laughs> dashboard we presented to the business. You just put the, like I say like another monitor, another Raspberry Pi and then give it to the business something easy for them to assess is also like a cultural uh, education thing for them to uh, look your reports is all here on these dashboards and then start getting familiar and then start getting a better they're not going to build it for sure yeah. uh, all the information you needed it you ask you i can actually cross this other information and create another dashboard and he's like yeah, yeah yeah i can create for you can you put a pie shot? Yeah, yeah, can you put a pie shot? Even like a Jira information, like because Jira has some plugins like uh, Easy Shot that create shots for see how many people that's and then some people like ah, some companies has this culture of we have Jira, but the business never log into Jira. I'll have forced them to log to this dashboard here. <laughs> they put the information on on, a, on another dashboard in, in Grafana and put them to, to see, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, thanks. That's that's really interesting, especially that I'm going to look into that Jira stuff. Um, and that kind of answers the, the, that question I had in my head about whether it was like just North Star metric type things that people are interested in. But it sounds like really good and kind of like evolutionary questions that have uh, come out of it. Yeah, it's, it's like like I said, basically it's the education phase. So you need to do a workshop, show where is it to they tell them to not scare them that they're not going to build any. You're not going to manipulate anything. It's just a display for them to assess. They can download some information. They can also be uh, feeding more information that they needed. And the interaction going to be flowing as they got educated to use. Does anybody have any more questions? Speak now or email us afterwards. Paolo, I think that's, I'm going to call that a day. I think I, I really enjoyed that. I've got loads more questions for you. I, I foresee some installing of some software in my future, which uh, yeah. uh, may, may take some while, but um, 
So I may I may contact you later on. Yeah, I just want to add uh, more one thing that uh, if I was building this today, uh, I would look more to because the Java components I did was just to run locally. They could easily be like uh, REST APIs in a, in a REST uh, deploy as well in open in, in Kubernetes. You could be using uh, GraalVM, Grafan, or Quarkus, like it's just uh, na native compilation to na native cloud input there. That's all, all doable. The bridge as well could be uh, make as a, a native cloud. Yeah, you choose to use Camel because uh, it's easy to do integration with Camel because you can uh, get from this queue and top queue and then enrichment the files change to the format the database needs to receive then send the JSON uh, format the database needed to say you know, open date. So that was all the reasons I choose this uh, small components around uh, this uh, demo. I, I think and, I think that has to be true for almost any kind of uh, system you've thrown together to, to demonstrate the concept. It's you're yeah. not saying you have to use no you're not saying you have to use influx. It's just saying this this one's worked. Look, I've yeah. shown you. Um, and now if you were going to do it yourself, then you could yeah, follow. When the first, yeah, exactly. Because when I first start building, I thought to choose Prometheus. So you could get the information from the GBPM, send to Prometheus, connect with Grafana. And at that time, the GBPM didn't have too much support on, on Prometheus, but today they have an easy way to deploy in the cloud. You choose the environment variables to connect to Prometheus and you can get the information from it. So if you don't want to use InfluxDB, you want to use Prometheus or Oracle or any other database, it's fine. It's just inflexible. It was the easy one to. Yeah. And we don't have to use open, running, right? Uh, we, we don't <laughs> have to use OpenShift or. Uh, no, no, we can we can run everything locally. Uh, yeah, yeah, because Kafka is uh, is easy to run locally. The the Kubernetes give you the easy way to ramp up memory and and uh, like any cloud system, right? Going to give you an easy way to ramp up the the memory. The, and the CPU, so if the things start getting larger, it's easy. Because when I started running in my local laptop, <laughs> the things started getting very <laughs> heavy. Like you put up a Kafka server, then you put up a QA server. Yeah. If uh, API, because if you run locally, you need um, a JVM with a uh, wide fly, for example. So then you have another service to, to host the Java application things. It's all like consuming my memory. They was like, oh my God, put the cloud. And, and, and include the Zoom client on top of that. You, you've got a very. Uh, yes, the very, Zuki, yeah, the Zookeeper. Client. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it was, the Zookeeper was dying, then we need to, oh no, it's memory, like out of memory. So, okay, let's mm -hmm. put in the cloud, deploy in the Kubernetes. Most of uh, bank systems, like bank, insurance companies, all these financial systems invest a lot in clouds. They have AWS, they have Kubernetes. They have loads of uh, uh, different platforms there, so you can deploy in any. It's, that's that's uh, the way I choose it. Cool. Thanks very much. Um, as I said at the beginning, uh, this uh, session should be recorded, uh, um, ha has been recorded, so we'll um, make that available fairly soon. Um, thanks very much, Paolo. Thanks, everybody else, for yeah, th Thank you. Thank you, everybody that joined. Thank you, guys, for having me. It uh, was really enjoying it. I really like it. And see you next time. Thank you. That'd be lovely. Bye, bye, and, folks. And just one more thing. Uh, if you want to find me on the Meteor Mentor, uh, is, is the website is meteormentor.com. You can just uh, find me there. I can be your mentor if you're interested to discuss, learn, or career change, anything. Like, is to my reach. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can help because that's my um, volunteer work. I'm, I'm not pushing you, just uh, is my, uh, like um, the things I'm, I know, some if it's Java career progress you want to do or anything. So not related, I'm not gonna tell you, hey, come to Red Hat or anything like this. So you just go to whatever is best for you. I suppose that's yeah. uh, go to the website if you want to mentor or be a mentee. Yeah, or be a mentee, yes. If yeah. you want to mentor, yeah. be a mentee. And you can find all different peoples there as well, nice people. And we have sessions to make your people there. Cool. cool. Um, it's nearly two o'clock. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to hang up the phone. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye bye, all. Bye.